こんにちは、こんばんは、おはようございます。Where it is that you're watching from? Some of you are staying up very early. So, hello, Yoriko. I see Yoriko. I see Barbara. I see Mariana. And I see Alice. Good to have you guys.、Um, it's been a while, hasn't it? So, today I had a couple ideas for cooking with dashi. And I was going to change things up a little bit.、Um, I wanted to do a salad today. I feel like I haven't done a salad in a long time, and I wanted to share one of my favorite recipes using yuzu kosho. So, yuzu kosho, if you've never heard of it before, is a red pepper paste made with yuzu、um, and red pepper. Very spicy, very potent stuff. It comes in green and red.、Uh, I don't think, I think those are the only colors that I've seen.、Um, I don't know if there's a yellow, yellow one. Have you guys seen a yellow one before? Anyways, if you've never had it, this is like the ultimate、uh, condiment. It, ha- it has so much flavor, it's super spicy. And、uh, I like to eat it with like tonkatsu、um, karage, which is like deep fried chicken. Tonkatsu is deep fried pork cutlet.、Um, you can also have it with like gyoza, or you can have it with fish. Those are、uh, Japanese pot stickers.、So、there's very many different uses for yuzu kosho. And one of my favorites is putting it into a salad dressing.、So, I don't know if you guys have made、uh, salad dressings from scratch before. If you have, let me know in the comments. Oh, it looks like Alice has had green yuzu kosho. So I also have green, but today I thought I would use the red version.、Uh, so, first thing that we're going to do is make the dressing.、Um, it's a really easy dressing, it's very light, which is why I like it.、Um, Japanese dressings tend to be on the light side, and that's why I, I、uh, really like this one. It's light. Light and packs a punch. So, we're going to use a little bit of yuzu kosho, a little bit of salt, a little bit of rice vinegar. So, osu is rice vinegar, Japanese kind. I've never had any other kind of rice vinegar. I wonder if there's like a, is, is there like a Chinese version or a Korean version of rice vinegar? I don't think I've ever seen an American rice vinegar. So, this is what I use, the Miskan brand. And then we'll also put in a little bit of sesame oil. So that's going to be our base dressing, and then a few drops of honey to round things out. And it's a very、um, flavorful dressing. I really like it. And have you, ever, have you guys ever had mizuna before? This is mizuna. I've actually grown it. It's very easy to grow, it's one of the easiest vegetables.、Um, actually, green, leafy greens are some of the easiest vegetables to grow if you're, if you're a gardener or if you've ever. Wondered about、uh, gardening. So it looks like Barbara says that there is a Chinese version of rice vinegar. I haven't had it, or if I, I have had it, I, I didn't know I had it.、Um, so yeah, this is Mizuna. If you can't find it,、uh, just use baby greens. I was going to mix it up. I usually just mix up、uh, 50 50 of baby greens and Mizuna. The Mizuna is really crunchy. You can have it like with a daikon salad. If you've ever had like a daikon Mizuna salad, they put in some、uh, aburaga, which I have right here. Um, and you can serve it with like an ao, ao jiso or a、um, ume jiso dressing. It looks like Mariana says that she's had、um, some rice vinegar, Chinese rice vinegar, because that's the easiest that she can find. So I'm going to put the、uh, chat feed here so I don't have to look away this way.、Um, so, first thing that I'm going to do is, I guess, before we get to the dressing, I'm just going to prepare my greens. So, I already rinsed this. This is one bunch. And we'll probably just use about a half of it. And I always cut off the stems. It's different than spinach. If you, guys, if you guys have seen some of my、um, spinach videos, I don't know if I posted it yet, but I usually try to preserve the root of the spinach stem because it's supposed to be nutritious. Do you guys,、uh, do, you guys do that with your spinach? The little, the little purple root is supposed to be nutritious. At least that's what my mom's mom said to my mom, who told me. So I think there's some wisdom there. So I'm just going to cut this into about one and a half. One inch pieces. And you guys can tell me if you guys have had mizuna before, let me know in the comments. Or if you like the stem, if you have had it, or if you like the leafy part. I'm actually, like, when I usually eat salads, I don't like the stem too much, but mizuna is an exception. I think it's because the stems are so, so thin. Very crunchy, very light tasting. So, let's see. That is ready to go. So we'll mix the dressing together. I'm going to put in about a half teaspoon of salt. Let's see how the spoons go. 
Happy Wednesday, by the way. Halfway through the uh, the work week. It's been a busy week for me. I don't know about you guys. You guys busy? Let me know in the comments. What do you guys got planned for the weekend? I want to go to the beach. I'm going to go to the beach and surf. So I'm going to put in about uh, two teaspoons of music kosher. If you don't like your uh, dressing too spicy or if you're sensitive to spicy foods, you might want to start with one teaspoon. Um, this stuff is potent, like I mentioned. So there's about two teaspoons. And I'm going to do a quarter cup of the rice vinegar and then about two tablespoons of the sesame oil. So I'm just eyeballing it. We'll just taste it and see how, how it tastes. Okay. It's usually how I make my dressings. Um, so two tablespoons of sesame oil. And honey. Getting good use of my honey. Hello, Wesley. Welcome to the uh, party. We're just getting started making some salad dressing. Are you guys going to be doing anything for uh, Halloween? I think this weekend is when all of the Halloween parties are going to happen. Are you guys dressing up? I may dress up. You guys have seen some of my costumes on Instagram. I'm just putting about a teaspoon of honey. I like my dressing that sweet. And then we'll just mix everything together with a fork. You can, use, you can also use like a whisk. Let's get it all. Uh, you want to get it nice and emulsified. So emulsified means like you get the little oil and the water droplets interspersed together. That's one of the reasons why they put um, mustard in vinaigrette dressings is because the mustard helps the oil and the water to emulsify. At least that's what I read. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. Let me know. <laughs> this smells super delicious right now. That's me, a yuzu koshou, and a little bit of rice vinegar. Bomb. All right, so we can go ahead and prepare the salad. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, I'll just make a little salad right now. Put some of the uh, greens right there. And I don't know if you guys saw my post. I did share a link to a, a page on my website where I posted all of the um, PDF recipes that we've covered so far. So you can go download them the last two days. So we did dashi, we did uh, miso soup, we did um, the green bean gomaai yesterday, as well as the, uh, what else did we make? Okonomiyaki. One more. Anyways, all the recipes are available if you want. Um, I'm going to put a book together once we're done with this challenge so you can get that entire booklet um, if you sign up on my email list. So make sure to head over there if you want the recipes. Give them a shot. Oh, yeah. Kabocha Nimono. That's what I forgot. <laughs> so I'm just putting the uh, little bed of Mizuna, the, the baby greens on top. And then um, I was going to put some cucumber. So this is Japanese cucumber. It's very thin. It's a very mild flavor. I'll just put a little bit, just a few slices. Do you guys like Japanese cucumber? I usually um, make a cinnamon with it. It's very easy. So yeah, Mariana says it's been a very busy week. Wesley says he's on duty on the boo boo bus. What? What is a boo boo bus? You guys, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what a boo boo bus is. It's the first time I've heard that term. So I'm just thinly um, chop slicing the cucumbers. Just gonna put a few on here. And I was supposed to get cherry tomatoes with my Amazon Prime delivery order yesterday, but they really, they really screwed up. I don't know, I don't know what they were doing yesterday. They were late, first of all. They were like 30 minutes late. They usually give you like a two-hour uh, delivery window. So they're they're always on time for the most part, I'd say. Because um, I order the, I order my groceries from them pretty regularly, but yesterday they were late. And out of like the, the 12 things that I ordered, I only got like three. And so fortunately, the eggs came because if the eggs didn't come, we wouldn't have been able to uh, make the konomiyaki. So we were uh, lucky there. Okay, so here's my salad. Nothing fancy. Um, sometimes I put 
aburage on here. If you want like a crunchy aburage, I, I toast it. I don't know if you guys ever toast it. Okay, so Wesley says he works in an ambulance. Cool. That must be an exciting job. I thought about going into ambulance work. I was actually, when I was in uh, college, in university, I was pre pre med. I was going to be a doctor. But even before that, I was going to be a scientist. Biotechnology was my was my major, and then I switched. I switched to pre medicine, and then pre pharmacy, and then I ended up being a pharmacist. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, aburaga strips because I like it. It's uh, you've never had this before. This is uh, deep fried tofu. And uh, it's lighter than atsuage, which is another type of deep fried tofu. And uh, this is what I think Mariana wants me to uh, show her how to make. <laughs> Wesley says, don't, don't go into ambulance work. So uh, Mariana, this is what you want to learn how to make, right? I sent you a, a Japanese uh, article on how to, how to make it. And the key, I don't know if you guys have, have you guys made aburage before? If you have, let me know in the comments. Maybe you can help us learn how to do it. But I was reading this Japanese blog and it said that you need to use like a very dilute uh, soy milk, so like a 10, 10 to 1 ratio of water, uh, or a 10 to 1 dilution. So you dilute it like 10x, so it's a super dilute soy milk. And then you turn that into tofu, and then you deep fry it. And that's how you get a very light um, tofu, tofu piece like this. So. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. And by the way, let me know what you guys think of the uh, challenge, five-day cooking challenge. It's a challenge for me, too, because i got to figure out what to make and make sure that I tell you how to make it correctly. Um, never done anything like it. When I did my previous live streams, I usually just did it once a week. So on Wednesday nights, I would go live for about an hour and cook one dish. But... These past few days, we've been doing like multiple dishes each day, which is fun. I like cooking. Okay, so there's my salad. Very straightforward. Normally, like I said, I'd put some tomatoes on there, but I didn't get them yesterday, so I couldn't. And then we'll just drizzle the, uh, the dressing. Sometimes I put a little bit of cracked black pepper if I want it a little bit more diced. Just throw a little bit on right now, show you how it looks. You know, when uh, I go to Japan and there's a hotel that I stay at that has like a breakfast, my favorite part is the salad, the salads. They always have good salad dressings at the uh, hotel breakfast. That's something that they don't have in the States. You ever eat breakfast at an American hotel in the US? You use like oatmeal, cereal, bread, fruit, yogurt. They don't really eat salads in the morning, I guess. Okay, so you can see here, this looks nice and spicy. I like it a little bit on the spicy side. Like I said, you should probably taste the dressing, make sure that it has the right amount of heat and uh, make sure that you mix it up prior to putting it over so that you don't get just the oil or just the vinegar part. It's always key. All right, so here's our first first dish for tonight, the uh, salad. Didn't really have anything to do, do with dashi, but I wanted to be salad and show you how I make one of my favorite dressings. So that's that. Okay, so moving on to uh, our dashi recipe. So I have about eight cups worth of dashi here. I wanted to do kitsune udon. So kitsune udon is a very simple udon dish. You use dashi, a little bit of soy sauce, and uh, meat or sake and other stuff, depending on the recipe, to make the mensuyu, the soup base. And um, I also wanted to show you how to make ankake tofu. So we're going to use, this is atsuage, which is deep fried tofu. Um, I did it myself since it's very difficult to find here. Um, every now and then I'll see it, and if I do see it, I'll buy some, but um, usually I don't see it. So I make it at home. It's very easy to make. You just have to uh, remove excess water from your tofu, and then... Uh, deep fry it for about three to four minutes until it turns a nice gold color and then take it out and it's very delicious. So where we're going to top the um, ankake dofu, ankake atsuage dofu with the 
green onions. So I have some green onions here. I have some carrots that I shredded as well as some green beans. And then we're going to make an ankake or the an sauce with some dashi and some sake and some shoyu. Where is the soy sauce? Right here. We just use some of this. So do you guys want to start with the atsage, ankake, or do you want to do the kitsune udon? Have you guys ever made either of those? I will wait for you guys to reply. Okay, or not. <laughs> All right, so first thing um, I'm going to do is I guess we can do the ankake first on, on sauce. It's very straightforward. I'm going to do about a cup. A cup of on sauce, that should be sufficient because this isn't too much. This is a little bit less than one block of tofu. It looks like Mariana says she's made kitsune udon before. So yeah, very easy. I like to put a egg into the kitsune udon to make it a little bit more nutritious, more of a meal, because I always get hungry if I don't have any kind of protein in my um, udon. So I'm going to measure out here about a cup of dashi. So if you've never made um, an sauce before, you can use a thickener like potato starch, katsukuriko, which is what we're using here. That's what this looks like. If you can't find potato starch, you can also use kuziko, which is another, it's arrowroot flour, and then corn starch. That's another starch that you can use. All of these are activated by heat. You have to get it up to a certain temperature to activate it, and then if you're at that temperature, you'll notice as soon as you add it to the um, pot mixture, it'll thicken up right away. And the key to using any kind of starch like this when you're cooking with it is to always put it in a little bit of water ahead of time. So make like a slurry, and then you can add it to your hot, hot liquid. So we're going to use about a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. I don't know where my tablespoon went, so I'll just use my serving spoon. <laughs> so I'm going to measure about a tablespoon, and then we'll put, I usually do about a two to one ratio of water to uh, potato starch, or you can also do three to one. I'm just going to pour a little bit. And you want to stir it up so that it stays suspended, because it'll separate. It'll settle at the bottom if you add a little bit of water, and then... Um, let it sit. So always make sure to uh, stir it up a little bit and make it a slurry. So, see that's how it looks. You can do the same thing with the uh, potato starch as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the heat. So this is one cup of dashi that we're using. I just used the uh, dashi packs like we did last time. These are the ones that I used. I got these on my last trip to Koki Prefecture, which is in Shikoku, one of the uh, southern islands of Japan. And uh, they're famous for katsobushi. So if you ever go visit Kochi Prefecture, that city, Kochi, which is the capital of that prefecture, then you'll see katsobushi everywhere. One of the uh, specialties. Uh, delicious. So, okay, so that's going. We're gonna put in some soy sauce, and some sake, and then we'll top the sauce, or we'll top the tofu, the atsage, with the sauce. Put a little bit of uh, green onion. You can also put some ginger or ichimi or shichimi pepper to add a little bit of a kick. And that'll be essentially it. Very, It's very similar to agadash tofu. If you like agadash tofu, you'll probably like ankake. Uh, it's a little bit more like a, a gravy sauce instead of, a, uh, I guess, a stupi sauce, like agadash music usually comes in. Um, so I, I like to mix it up every now and then. I don't know about you guys. Have you guys have had any kind of an ankake um, tofu dish before? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so we're waiting for that to heat up. Measure out the uh, measure out the short the soy sauce and what else is it? It's sake, sake. So we'll do about two tablespoons of soy sauce.
And then we'll do about a tablespoon of medium, or sake, I mean, and then a tablespoon of medium. All right, so we can see that uh, it's already heated. So I'm gonna see what this looks like. It's gonna be a nice brown color. And it tastes and smells just amazing. You've ever had agadash tofu or um, ankake tofu? Yeah, it tastes really good. So that's what we'll do there. You can like that, put in the starch. I'll show you how, how quickly it thickens up. You saw that it was very watery right now. And then as soon as you add the starch, make sure to stir it so you don't get any clumps in case there's clumps of uh, starch in there. So if you put more starch, um, you can get a really, really thick sauce. So if you want, on my spoon filler, you want a little bit of a, a lighter, soupier um, sauce that isn't super thick. Use a little bit less um, potato starch or pepperoncino, whatever starch that you're using. Um, and if you want a really thick sauce, then use more. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up. Okay, so I already heated these a little bit. These are best uh, straight out of the fryer. If you've never had deep fried tofu, it tastes delicious. And then for the vegetables, I'm just gonna uh, saute them on a small pan separately. And um, then we'll put them on top of the tofu and then we'll put the unsauce on top of that, top it with some green onions and then a little bit of shishimi pepper. Um, and that's it. That'll be our little atsage, ankake atsage. Okay, so I'm going to get the vegetables started. I'll just use some olive oil. Oops. A little bit, just so that the uh, vegetables are cooked through. And if you don't like the vegetables to be a little bit on the raw side, like a little bit of bite, you can microwave them for a little bit. I like to have a little bit of a bite to these, so I just do a little bit of a pan fry and then top them on there. And that helps to add some color a little bit of texture and a little bit of different flavor to the dish. So, put this on here for a little bit. Okay, so my go-to, um, well that's heating up and cooking. My go-to Mansuyu uh, recipe is uh, three cups of dashi stock to a quarter cup of uh, light soy sauce. Then take out the light soy sauce and uh, sake. Let me grab the light soy sauce. So that's what we'll use. Um, we'll make about a quarter cup in each of these. Have you guys ever made mentsuyu before? It's very easy to make. There's a quarter cup there. And then a quarter cup of sake. And then we'll just add in three cups of dashi and then let it cook for a little bit until the alcohol smell is gone. And then that'll be ready to use. You can eat it with uh, soba. You want to eat soba or you can eat it with udon like we're doing today. And uh, then we get a spatula. The vegetables. What are you guys cooking this week? I know you guys must be cooking this week on your own. What are you guys making for dinner on the menu? Let me know in the comments. Three cups, two cups. All right, so that's just just about three cups. So I'm just gonna add everything back in here. Three cups to three cups of dashi, and then 
That was a quarter cup of light soy sauce and a quarter cup of sake. Ooh, Mariana says she found some light soy sauce at her local supermarket. Good job. That's more of a, uh, I guess, I don't know if we really call it a necessity, but it's good to have if you're trying to make certain dishes like uh, shirai, where you want to preserve the color of the um, dish. And also it helps to, the flavor is not as strong, right? So the natural flavor of whatever food you're seasoning it with will come through. All right, so when you smell your mensuyu when it's not ready, put your head over it. You'll get a little bit of a whiff of the alcohol. So if you've never done it before, make sure you smell it so you know what it smells like. And as soon as it's done cooking, you'll be able to take it off. Yeah. I guess I'm surprised too. I, I, I know that it's very difficult to find Japanese ingredients outside of um, cities that have a big population. So like I traveled a lot. Like I traveled in uh, Costa Rica, for example. I was looking for groceries and some of the bigger cities are like San Jose. They don't necessarily have a Japanese population there. So they don't have very many Japanese items that are easy to find. Even in like Canada and Outside of Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, even Portland, it might be a little bit more difficult. Portland actually, I mean, I've actually never looked there, so I can't say for sure about that city. But it's nice that you can order stuff online. Not a lot of stuff's available online. All right, so I'm just putting this on a medium heat. The on sauce is a little bit thicker than it was before. I don't know if you'll be able to tell because the camera view is a little bit smaller, but it's a little bit thicker. And then we'll just top the uh, atsage. My spoon fell in again. We'll top the atsage with the uh, green beans. They're uh, just, a little, just about done. So let me show you what that looks like. And they have the carrots have browned a little bit, and then the green beans have a little bit of browning going on. Let me put this on. Do you guys like agadash tofu? Agadash tofu is one of my favorite. I think it's probably the dish that um, one of the first Japanese dishes that I liked when I was a kid. I also like gyoza and kare. Japanese kare curry. I should try to rearrange that so it looks more presentable. Always working on my food presentation. They say you eat with your eyes first, right? Okay. So there's that. And you can put on some of the green onions. And then put on the un sauce. So, get rid of that one. And this is enough for like. And then you could probably do two or three tofu blocks. There's still a lot in there. But the problem with um, not using the on right away, I found that it usually tends to break down. So in the refrigerator, if you reheat it, it's usually not as thick as it was the first time that you made it. I don't know if you guys have any uh, tips on preventing that. <laughs> I haven't figured out a way to prevent that from happening. So usually when I make on, I'll just try to use it up the first the first day. That way I keep it nice and thick. Actually, I should put a little bit more in here. 
Val says she loves agadash tofu. What do you uh, do? You make it at home, or do you usually get it at restaurants? I usually make it at home because I try not to eat too many fried foods. And if you make it at home, you can make it healthier. Not only because you can use organic tofu, but you can also use less salt. You can um, pan fry it as well. Instead of deep frying it, you can just pan fry it, which uses less oil. You can also use olive oil, which is healthier than canola or vegetable oil. Um, so that's usually what I do. And bam. But here's how it looks. Ankake with katsuage. Sometimes I'll put in some bell peppers if I want to add a little bit more color, like red bell peppers. And shiitake mushrooms. You can do a lot of things with this. Very good. So, there's my ankake dofu dish with the uh, katsuage. All right, so let's check on the mensu. While that's going, I should transfer out the um, extra ankake so I can use this to boil some udon noodles. You guys made udon noodles from scratch? It's just flour and water. I've never done it before. So Wesley's asking, how long will it last without refrigeration? What are you asking about? Are you asking about my cucumbers, my mizuna, the atsage, the udon noodles, the mensuyu? Which one are you asking about? Mariana says, it looks amazing. We've made tochi udon. A lot of work. But there's nothing like eating fresh, fresh noodles, that's for sure. And it's super easy to make. Unlike soba, have you guys tried to make soba before? Soba is a little bit more technical, I would say. I took a class. Um, there's a lady, Sonoko Sakai. I don't know if you've know, heard of her before, but she's based up in LA. I took her soba making class this summer with my sister. Oops, that's boiling. So we had a good time. That was the first uh, cooking class I've taken in a long time. I think the last time I took a cooking class was in India, back in like. 2012, we traveled, uh, my girlfriend and I traveled in Asia, and India was one of the countries that we visited. Um, I think that was the first cooking class that I paid for. I learned how to cook Indian food. And I actually had the recipe still, and I still make them. They were, they were very good. So I'm just putting water in here to boil the udon noodles. These are the frozen kind, so if you can... There's a Japanese grocery, usually you can get these frozen. It's very cheap, like each of these is like less than a dollar. Um, versus going to like a uh, ramen shop, which is like, you can't walk out of a ramen shop in the US without spending like 15 bucks, it's crazy. Um, but I guess that's what you, uh, you just have to pay for that when you want to eat like exotic foods, right? But yes, Wesley, atsage, the, the atsage lasts a couple of days. I try to eat it within like two to three days because it is a fried food and it has oil in it. You don't want it to go rancid. So I don't think it'll go rancid in a week, but you probably want to eat it within a few days. But katsuage is so good. You'll eat it like all on the first day. It's so good. All you need to add is like ponzu, even just salt, eat it, eating it straight out of the fire. It's so good. You should try it. Very easy to make. Okay, so we're just going to keep the water. I think our mensu is done. It's nice and thick. You can see all the steam coming out. Sorry, it's not thick. I was thinking about the um, un sauce. It's very rich. Homemade mensu, if you've never done it before, all you need is three ingredients dashi, soy sauce, and sake. Mm. Yeah, Mariana says you've never tried making soba from scratch. You felt intimidated by it. Well, you'll never know if you can do it until you try it, right? So maybe you should try it next time you go to Japan. Or if they have uh, soba making classes in Italy. I don't know. I feel intimidated by making pasta. Pasta is not easy to make. Have you tried making pasta, Mariana, or anybody else? Wesley? Alice? There you go. Anybody? Have you guys tried making fresh pasta before? I have a pasta extruder as well as the cutting dies. Um, I should probably be making some soon, actually. A lot of, uh, it's a lot of work. Let me see if I can get this out. 
I'm too short. <laughs> I was going to show you my pasta cutting dies. The chicken, the kitchen aid, the kitchen aid kind of you just stick into the, uh, the machine and then it just rotates. The barber said she's made ravioli. Wow. I would love to make ravioli. That must be a lot of work. And Mariana says she's made pasta many times. Tagliatelle and fettuccine. Mmm. I bet that tastes good. So Barbara, did you make your ravioli by hand or did you use a machine? And Mariana, did you use a machine or did you make it by hand? Let me know. I would say my favorite pasta is spaghetti. I like spaghetti and then I like fettuccine and then I probably like macaroni in that order. Oh yeah, and actually I didn't know that this pasta even existed when I went to Italy a couple years ago. They have this thick pasta, it's called pici. You guys ever heard of pici before? P-I-C-I? -I? It's like a really thick spaghetti. It's like twice the thickness of spaghetti. It tastes so good. And I couldn't, I've never seen it in the U.S. I don't know if they sell it outside of Italy. Because you know there's like hundreds and hundreds of types of uh, pasta, as I understand it. Maybe not hundreds, but there's a lot. What I'm going to do, what I usually do when I make my udon, my pizza udon, we're going to drop in one of these, a braga. We're also going to do a poached egg. Some people like to eat raw egg on top, or raw egg yolk. Um, depending on where you live, it may, might, might not be safe to uh, eat raw eggs, so I don't know if I'd recommend it. But um, that's usually what I do. And I'll throw on some green onions, and a little bit of uh, ichimi pepper or shichimi. Do some shichimi today. And that's how I make my kitsune udon. It's very straightforward. And it's good for a uh, weeknight meal because it takes like five minutes to make, especially if you're using the uh, frozen noodles. As you can see, I should show you I should show you guys my spice cabinet. It's like getting out of control because I have so many, about three quarters of my spice cabinet is Indian spices because I cook a lot of Indian food. That's what takes up all the space. And then I have a lot of vanilla extracts, because I like vanilla. I always use it to make vanilla ice cream. You guys had vanilla before? Like different types of vanilla? Tahitian vanilla? Tahitian vanilla, I found, is my favorite. It's the most um, floral. Floral of vanillas. Where did it go? OK, so it looks like Barbara and Mariana made pasta by hand. You guys are good. Okay, I don't know where my sh shichimi went, so I'll have to look for it later, but that's usually how I do my udon. You guys like to top your udon with anything else? Oh yeah, nori. I'm gonna put some nori on as well. So nori is dried seaweed. You can use the, uh, the same kind that uh, you use for sushi. So sushi hane nori is the Nori that has little holes in it, and the little holes help to make the, if you didn't know, the little holes help to make the flavor better because a lot of flavor um, has to do with air and breathing and you're inhaling the aroma. So if your nori has holes in it, sushihane nori, then you'll get better flavor. So that's the whole reason behind that. Mmm, vanilla paste. Alice, vanilla paste is where it's at. I use that all the time when I want to make something with vanilla bean. And I don't want to be scraping out the beans, and plus the beans are expensive too. Yeah, this is the stuff I use, vanilla. Nielsen Massey. I love vanilla. You guys ever made vanilla sugar before? Vanilla sugar is just dropping in a vanilla pod into a bunch of sugar, and the sugar will soak up um, all of the vanilla essence, and it'll taste like vanilla. They actually sh uh, sell this stuff. I've seen this uh, stuff sold in stores, and it's quite expensive. It's pretty easy to just make it yourself, and it tastes better because it's fresh. Okay, so the water's boiling. I'm just going to drop this in for about a minute, and then we'll drop in the egg as soon as the uh, noodles are in. And then once we strain it, we can go ahead and put... Um, the noodles in here as well as the mensu and then top with the aburage and we'll be just about ready to eat. So 
Are you guys getting hungry? 36.40 over here. can't believe it's already been 40 minutes. Time flies when you're cooking. Yes, Wesley says he loves making vanilla. I, I'm assuming you meant vanilla sugar, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to drop in the egg here and just let it poach for a little bit. <coughs> the heat and then I'm going to strain this. So I don't cook my egg um, all the way. I like it runny, especially the, the yolk. In my opinion, the yolk is the best part of the egg. It's like Barbara got a fr her friend gave her a, a jar of vanilla sugar. You have a good friend. I keep that stuff all up. All right, so see how see what I did here? You can see the egg yolk is still there on top. I'm dropping the noodles first and then put the egg yolk on top. Let's it off. So we can always adjust it. There's the egg yolk. I was trying to put it in the middle. But that didn't work. <laughs> All right, so there's that. And then we can put in some of the Mensu noodle soup base. So this is Mensu, what we made. So make sure that we do it. So what was this for? These pots, they're supposed to not spill because they have the, I think it's called a fluted edge, right? Where it's like curved instead of flat. It usually spills. I don't know if you guys have that problem with your pots. I think it's, it, it also matters if you're pouring it fast or if you're pouring it slow. Usually if you pour it quickly, it doesn't spill. But if you're pouring it slowly, then it might spill a little bit. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna put in a few few uh, green onions since I like to put some green onions in my nudon. And we get some nori seaweed. Do you guys toast your seaweed before you use it? I never did it before, but it adds a little bit of flavor. You toast it. Hello, Amanda. Welcome to the party. We are just finishing up making nudon. Good to see you. So Wesley says he buys the beans and mixes it with homemade maple syrup. Oh man, I should try that. Can you, doesn't, so does, does the maple syrup not overpower the vanilla bean? Because maple syrup has a pretty strong taste. I would have thought it might overpower the, the vanilla bean before. Sometimes I add bourbon to my maple syrup. If I'm going to do like bourbon, peach bourbon maple syrup. Oh man, that's so good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just... I don't know, should I cut this up or should I just put it on? I think I'm going to cut it up into squares. And like I mentioned before with the, uh, the salad, if you want a crunchy texture, just toast it in the oven or on the pan for a few seconds and it'll get nice and crunchy. I do that sometimes. All right, so there's one, two, three, four. Delicious. Ooh, okay. So Wesley says, nope, does not get diluted. So I'm going to give that a try. I'll take your word for it. I'm just getting some. All right. I don't know where my nori went. But anyways, when I find it, <laughs> I'm going to top this with a little bit of nori, and that'll be my dinner. So what did we do today? We made a 
salad with mizuna and homemade mizuko shell dressing, some ankake atsuage dofu, which is deep fried tofu with a thick dashi and soy sauce based sauce with some vegetables, green beans and carrots, and some green onion, and uh, kitsune udon. So I hope you guys are inspired. I hope you learned something from this episode today, day three of the dashi cooking challenge. Um, and let me know what you guys think, if you guys have any questions or comments, any feedback to make this a little bit of a better show for you guys. Before we go, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a surprise. So, I asked, when my dad was last in Japan, I asked him to buy a bunch of dashi to give away to help promote my new cookbook as well as my online course. So I was thinking that whoever it is that can post at least two recipes that they gave a try within the next couple of weeks will be eligible to win um, a dashi pack. So these are kaya no ya dashi. I don't know if you've seen this before, but um, this is some of the best dashi that you can get in Japan. And I think there's five of them. So there's five little packets in these. I have a bunch here which I'm going to be giving away. So hopefully you guys will be uh, inspired to try these dashi recipes. You can use these packs to make all of the things that we've been making. Um, and I'll be giving these away. I don't know how many win winners yet exactly, but uh, this is really good stuff. I don't know if you guys have had this before, but um, you can actually order it online. They, they have like a, an American website. I don't know if they ship internationally or not, but this is some of my favorite dashi um, packs. So that was my little announcement for today. Thank you guys for, tu for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Hope you learned something helpful, inspirational. Um, and I hope that you give these uh, a try at some point. Um, we'd love to hear you know, any, any feedback that you guys have. Make sure to get the recipes. I'll post these recipes. I'll try to do it tomorrow if I can. Um, but I linked in the Facebook group so you can Click that link to the website where you can download the PDFs originally and uh, save them for whenever you like making uh, dishes with dashi. I forgot to say it yesterday, but otsukare sama. Thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching me. Hope you learn, hopefully you learned something. That's going to be it for today, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow. So, dane, matane.